Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our retro throwback of the T-Mobile Sidekick Slide. The Sidekick is one of the most iconic phones in history. In fact, it was one of the earliest smartphones popularized by the media and celebrities. So over a decade ago, it was the hottest gadget to get among teenagers and the messaging centric with that infamous Sidekick style QWERTY keyboard. The original phone was crafted by Danger and through the years there have been many iterations also produced by different companies. So the version we're taking a look at today is the one by Motorola. Instead, as the name suggests, this one just has a sliding mechanism. Other iterations we've checked out include the Sidekick 4G, which is the newest one that was manufactured by Samsung and ran on Android OS. So again, this is not really the original, but still quite a nostalgic device to revisit. Now this phone came out back in late 2007, making it over 10 years old, so almost a perfect decade of technology has elapsed since then, and it had a 1.3 megapixel camera, there was Bluetooth, uh, it had a 2.5 inch TFT LCD display, so kind of small even for a sidekick, and it also had the TI OMAP 850 processor. Clocked at roughly 200 megahertz, so definitely not a fast phone by today's standards, but uh, back in the day it sufficed. The phone did not come with wide Wi-Fi. In fact, very few Sidekicks came with Wi-Fi. The Sidekick 4G, the newest one, is really the only exception to that rule. Uh, and it ran on the Danger OS, which was a custom operating system designed by Danger and Sharp uh, back when the first phone in 2002 was released. So definitely a very nostalgic phone, um, and it was kind of the younger version of a BlackBerry back in the day. So here we have quite a few accessories thrown in the box. We have including a headphone, which is made by Motorola, and here we also have the cable for syncing and charging, which is using simply mini USB, so it's the older standard. Here we also have a separate charger module that's uh, everything pre-attached without the cable. And here is the battery, it's the BK70, which comes in at 1,100 milliamp hours. There's also a leather folio case branded by Motorola and the phone just slides in like so and you could wear this on your belt if you want to do that. And here we have the back cover for the phone, so that's kind of interesting. And finally we have quite a few manuals including how to uh, use the Sidekick and access all the controls because the Sidekick did not have a touchscreen display, so there were a lot of buttons built onto this thing. There's also uh, notifications that are activated by light, and this is how you would slide open the QWERTY keyboard. So that's all the contents of the box. All right, so taking a look at the device, let's put in the battery here. And it seems like your SIM card and micro SD card would simply slide into the edge slots over here as well. And this is the camera, which is probably around 1.3 megapixels, maybe 2 megapixels. Here's another iconic 4-inch smartphone, the Nokia N9, and you can see how they're pretty much the same in terms of overall dimensions. Definitely a smaller screen here, but you also have that physical keyboard for faster text entry, and a much larger phone, the iPhone Plus, so that has a 5.5 inch display. And on the top here you had access to a very interesting four-way uh, D-pad. It's a, kind of a strange arrangement, but it actually feels relatively clicky. There's also the earpiece, and it looks like a home key, a menu key of some sort. And down below here there's also a trackball, just like on the BlackBerry Pro, for faster navigation on the web and through longer menus dedicated talk and end keys, and a back key as well. Sliding it open like this, we have a spring-assisted design, so it feels uh, relatively clicky, and we have access to that QWERTY keyboard. And you can see that uh, the D-pad here, which you can use to navigate if you don't want to use the trackball, um, also has that light in the center for notifications, which is kind of interesting. And the OS here is very colorful, uh, but uh, back then, again, this was one of the few smartphone operating systems on the market, uh, along with Palm OS and BlackBerry OS. Here's the time and date information, along with the battery status. It has the T-Mobile logo, and we have just this very simplified menu that is in a carousel view for us to scroll through to navigate all the apps. That includes a... Uh, access to games, um, so probably will run Java-based games without too many problems, and I can also swipe onto the left, it seems like, to go in, and swipe back to go out, so pretty intuitive for a non-touchscreen device. 
There's also emails that you can set up on this thing, instant messaging, including AOL, Yahoo Messenger. So it's definitely showing its age there. And there's also download catalog. So for ringtones, games, this was their primitive app store that was on here. Dimming the lights here, you can tell that the keyboard is backlit along with all the keys. So it's pretty easy to still see under darker environments, which is nice. And the keys themselves are fairly raised above the surface. So they're pretty easy to tap and to press. Uh, which is a plus. Other things I want to quickly point out, if I tap on the uh, menu key, it pulls up this additional settings drawer, which reminds me a lot of uh, Palm OS back in the day. That gave me options for airplane mode, there's Bluetooth, I can change the background, uh, and other settings depending on what app that you're in. Brings up this scrolling list with this uh, kind of dramatic sounding music that uh, goes through everyone uh, involved in the project, as well as the operating system, it seems. A very interesting way of, of showing the about. So the interface here is very simple. I can just capture an image, I can send the previous image to email or text message. I can also change the exposure settings and browse my photo album. Because it's a fixed focus lens, it doesn't work quite as well for close-up shots, for landscape far away shots. In good lighting environments, it actually does a decent job for such a, uh, again, very early phone. But uh, you can see how it's pretty quick to capture since there isn't a need for the camera to physically focus depending on how close objects are to the lens. If I tap on the menu here, it also pulls down additional settings including changing the resolution of the shot and additional settings including the JPEG quality that I can change and we just exit out of that. Uh, so there's not too many things that you can edit. Definitely not a very advanced camera software on here, but uh, functional. Some things you can customize in the settings include the speed of the trackball and d-pad, and there's even an ambient light sensor that can automatically dim and make the display brighter depending on what environment you're in, so you can go and customize that. Something else that I found kind of interesting is something called jump shortcuts. So essentially you can see all of these shortcuts that can take you instantly to various apps built onto the phone, so you simply tap on this key here along with a corresponding key on the keyboard. So for instance, to go to email, I'm going to tap on this and E, and that will launch me into the email app. And it's a predictive keyboard as well, so as you're typing along, it will automatically pop up suggestions that you can tap on to more quickly type in this information. So it's actually pretty capable as far as the sending text messages and for quick messaging apps like this. Under organizer apps, you had a calendar, there's also notes and to-do list. It's an active screen, so it will actually pop up with the notes as well as notifications as they happen in real time. So you can tap on things to view them. And again, the keyboard makes text entry very easy. You can also tap on the again menu drawer really to do most of the tasks in this OS, such as creating new notes and viewing settings uh, and things like that. So that works pretty well. And we're also going to take a look at the one built-in game on here, which is Bob's Journey to the Center of the Earth. It kind of reminds me of uh, earlier versions of Mario, um, but it's actually pretty fun to play with. And there's all these crazy sound effects. So basically you have to now navigate left and right, tap on plus to jump, and you would want to land on these bugs to score points, uh, the screen is always scrolling to the right, so if you go too slowly, you could die just by not moving anywhere. And uh, the controls are actually pretty intuitive, and uh, it's definitely a pretty decent full version game. Uh, that's included for free right out of the box. It's also kind of interesting about the gaming experience. Each time you hit one of the hearts or one of the custom sprites, you get different light notifications on the D-pad. So it's actually programmed pretty well. Uh, and finally, because we do have all these hardware keys, um, it does feel like an actual handheld console. We've definitely come a long way since the days of the Sidekick and the Sidekick Slide. But it's still interesting to see how well this phone functions in terms of its UI, its simplicity, and how you could combine lots of these physical buttons and keys to make for a fairly intuitive user experience, despite the lack of a real touchscreen, which I found to be pretty surprising picking this phone back up. And it combined this excellent QWERTY keyboard with actually a pretty attractive overall package. Now the slide was one of the smallest sidekicks that were released. Uh, it has in fact, the smallest screen out of the entire Sidekick line. Uh, and it's interesting how Motorola also stepped in to create one of these things, adding some of their design touches to the Sidekick family. So thanks for watching this retro throwback video here at OS Reviews. This has been a look back at the T-Mobile Sidekick slide.